speaking patois is is authentically jamaican this is how we are um i believe that the, it's a jamaican problem i believe it, it's it's a it, we have mental slavery hey trackies welcome back to another video here on txd track time please remember to like the video and also subscribe to the channel all right so trackies um yeah i know you haven't guys haven't been seeing me for a while that's because my internet still isn't working and yeah these people are as malicious as you can I mean, this is Jamaica. It's wild. But anyway, I don't really want to get into that too long. I was asked to <laughs> uh, um, do this video. So I'm doing it. It's a different streaming um, software. So I may sound a little different. So I apologize for the audio. But with that said, so yeah. Um, Stephen Francis touched on the marketability of Jamaican athletes versus, you know, American athletes. And I'm just going to be reacting to what he had to say. Now, this is a topic that I touch all the while. All the while, all the while, y'all come on my channel and talk about how uh, Jamaican athletes, and I say y'all need to, you know, get marketable, right? You you need to have a personality. T take a page out of as much as some of y'all Jamaicans don't like her. Take a page out of Shakiri's book. Take a page out of Noah Lyles' book, you know, and you know, follow suit. You don't necessarily have to be showing us the same thing, but the point is, you know what? Work on your own personal branding. But anyway. Tim Francis came out. He had a few things to say. So yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen or share this video. Right. And then, yeah, clearly I'm going to get back, um, with the rest of my thoughts after, you know, we finish playing. Right. Children in Jamaica are taught not to think, to be quiet when adults speak, not to look people in the eyes, no allies who me to me is better than Bolt in terms of marketing because he has created a phenomenon about himself without the performances. <laughs> right? Um, Noah Lyle said last year he was going to break three world records. Right? Everybody in Jamaica says, How oh, he can be saying that kind of thing and so on. Nobody in America battered an island. Sherika Jackson came out on the other hand and said she was going at the, after the world record in the 200. And the amount of condemnation and, and, and disgust with the Jamaican people went on with, right? A totally different reaction. You can't be putting the, the, the mic in their, their um, face at champs and every single one of them said the same thing. I want to thank my coach. I want to thank God. I want to do this. They're all boring. All right, so track is, yeah, that was it. You heard what Stephen Francis had to say. So, yeah, <laughs> all the athletes are boring. Uh, before I get into the whole um, marketability, you know, you know, part of what we're seeing with our senior athletes, I want to touch on something that maybe y'all are not, not ready for because I believe that there is cause and then there is effect, right? And I'm going to jump into what I mean by cause and effect clearly and I don't 100% agree with Stephen Francis in terms of what our um, athletes are taught, our children are taught, right? Um, I believe also that this video sounds like they grabbed certain sections of his speech because nothing really sounds connected. It, the first part is, is separated from the middle and it's, it's three different statements he's making and it just sounds like it was mushed together. That's the, that's the vibe I'm getting. So let's touch on the first section where we talked about how our Jamaican children are taught. Yes, our children are taught to be respectful. Right. I have no issue with our athletes being taught to be respectful or our people just being taught to be respectful in general. I um, I think, though, what he takes issue with is what he believes this, you know, respectfulness in turn has done to their personality. But I don't believe, again, their expressiveness has anything to do with, you know, their respectfulness. I believe one, you know, there's respectfulness and then there's expressiveness. They're two separate things. And yeah, they can, co they can, you know, live together cohesively or work together or go hand in hand. Right. So again, I don't believe that there's an issue um, with the respectful um, part of, you know, how Jamaican people are brought up or how our children are brought up. What I do take issue with, no one, this is where the cause is. Where, um, and he didn't really highlight, I don't know if he talked about what he believes is the cause, but again, based on how this video was done, it feels that just certain segments were grabbed and mushed together. So I don't know if he touched on it, if he did, but I apologize. But yeah, um, with that said, when it comes to our people and being expressive 
right? We are some of the most expressive people in the world. That is why people love Jamaica and Jamaicans because of who we are as a people. So I don't believe that we are not expressive or expressive enough. I believe though that we are led to believe our branding you know, as, as a people, and it's people from a particular cross section or a certain socioeconomic background, those people are being led to believe that that brand of, you know, expressiveness is not okay. I believe that's what the problem is, right? So when we take a look at, you know, um, track and field, best believe it, you will see, you know, a lot of diversity in track and field in terms of, you know, rich people slash poor people can, you know, be a part of track and field. But let's be clear, you know, you know, track and field is a poor people sport. That is pretty much, you know, where you see um, poor people a lot. Our majority of poor people are from track and field. So, yeah, there's a, a particular way how, how they're going to be expressing themselves. And as far as I'm concerned, it's looked down up on. Now, how do we see this displayed? Well, through media. Through media, the depiction is very, very clear through media. Now, yeah, that's the elephant in the room. Maybe some of y'all don't want to talk about it, but yeah, I'm tea. <laughs> so I'm going to discuss it, right? So I remember this one particular year. It's, it's like years ago, a long, long time ago. There was this one child that was expressing himself. They were asking him after the race, you know, the typical shove mic in face thing. And or they were asking him, um, you know, how he feels. And he was like, Miss me just running up. And like in that moment, I was so excited. I was happy. I was laughing. I was crying. I was everything in, in that moment because for me, I'm enjoying the sport and not necessarily looking at anything underlined there. But I did notice that shortly after he spoke, he was ushered off the screen. So now you have a conundrum where the regular people now watching are looking and like, so why is he being rushed off the screen so quickly? You know, what did he do wrong? Now you start to pick apart, you know, where the issue may lie and you realize it's how he was speaking or how he was expressing himself. Um, clearly wasn't speaking in standard English at that particular moment. So now you start to pick at those things and say, oh my gosh, if our kids can't speak English um, when they're expressing themselves, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Then now in turn, because media acts like they're smart enough. Yeah, the gas, the, the gas light you, you, you react and then now in turn, they write articles. So now they start to write articles about how our, our, our children are, you know, expressing themselves on, on a national level, on national TV. Right. And then now after that, you find the kids the next time around, a mic is shoved into their face. They're now, instead of in that moment, expressing yourself as, as true as you can in terms of what you really feel, how you really feel, you know, you're left to be thinking, um, what can I say in the most, pol po with the most pol political correctness? What can I say in this moment? So I don't know who really started it, but somebody started it, right? Because I just remember it, it catching on like wildfire, right? Um, I want to thank God. I want to thank my coach. <laughs> and, and then they may say, oh, they just followed instructions or something like that. So now they've become, you know, quote unquote, boring, right? I don't believe our kids are boring. I don't believe this is how they express themselves in a the day to day, whether they're in their, their whole soul, in their communities, you know, they're just at school, whatever they're doing on a day to day, this is not how they express themselves. But they're led to believe that once they get to a national level, again, this version of expression is not good enough. But this is how I feel most comfortable in expressing myself. So when you rip that away, it rips away the authenticity you will get from that person in that particular moment. And I'm not saying it's only the people that, you know, speak patwa can express themselves in a way where, oh, it, it can be entertaining. But again, this is track and feel. And what you find is where, you know, most people, are, this is how they speak on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And again, this is the poor people. Right. So when, again, they're led to believe these things, this is the result that you get, quote unquote, children as peering boring. So Stephen Francis, you know, spoke to, oh, my gosh, you know, you shove a mic in their face and everybody's saying the same thing. You know, no personality. Why is that there no personality? Is it the kids that don't have no personality? I don't think so. I don't think it's that. I think it's that they're led to believe that this is not good enough for TV. Right. This is not good enough for a brand Jamaica. But in the same breath, these are the same people. And I'm going to stick to track and field even though I've seen it in other sectors. But when, you know, um, someone comes from overseas, right? A guest comes here to our country. You shove the mic in their face, right? So let's use racial shrap meat last year. And you say, chat to a few 
right? So it's good in that moment for them to speak it. But God forbid a Jamaican says it. Oh my God, it's frowned upon, right? And um, and they're looked down upon. And no, they don't really know how to express themselves. And let's be clear. Speaking Patwa is is authentically Jamaican. This is how we are. And um, and if you want to get the most expression out of us, yeah, Afi Draw is on Patwa. Y'all hear me on my channel from time to time go back and forth between speaking English and speaking Patwa because I know effectively if I want to express myself the way I want to express myself for you all to understand, it's not to draw for the dictionary and say the biggest words I can find, but no is to touch on what is authentically me and authentically Jamaican. And yes, that is the patwa, right? But it's looked down upon again uh, in certain sectors or when certain people do it. Let's put it that way. Certain people from a certain cross-section do it. Again, the poor people, them, people them from a certain socioeconomic background. But in turn, if you, if such man do it, it's okay. Everybody's with it and everybody's laughing and they're, they're happy and they're jubilant, right? But sometimes you will also find they will draw for those people in those 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 same poor people, right? They'll draw for them and when they're looking for a trending moment, right? And they'll call it, oh, bite of the week. Oh, it's cool then. It's it's exciting then when they do it, right? We're with them then when they do it. But when they do it otherwise, no, it's a no-no, right? So I believe wholesomely or wholeheartedly that some of our people are, you know, brainwashed into believing that what is authentically us is not acceptable on a global stage, right? So in turn you find our athletes now struggling to express themselves, struggling to express themselves effectively or even just build a brand, you know, around what they believe, who they are and, you know, you know, showing that to the rest of the world because the moment they do that, the rest of Jamaica is going to start to pick apart at them. And again, I will pinpoint that it's only Jamaicans from a certain cross section that they will do this too because I watch other sports trackies and I notice when, you know, other people, let's use race cars driving, right? Uh, who who can afford to do that poor people i don't think so right so when they when they come out now and they speak a certain way or 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 like stephen francis said touched on um the things that they want to achieve in the sport oh no nobody looks down on them everybody's lifting them up well clearly i'm there because i'm there to support them right but in turn um when you look at it you you see all of this support nobody's saying anything but when I, when a sharika comes out and says hey you know, I'm going out to the world record. Oh my God, how dare Sharika say that? Why can't Sharika say that? As a people, as a people, it's like we're, we're brainwashed into, you know, not believing in, in ourselves if you're from a certain place, right? Well, if somebody else does it or somebody else says it, oh, it's great, right? No. So, Chuck, is let's move away now from that particular issue of our athletes being virtually scared to really be themselves and start to look at now how this affects them as they matriculate into the next level, to the next stage, right? I believe that, you know, Jamaicans, um, yeah, it, we're kind of brainwashed. Um, it's as, as some of these people say, mental slavery, it is mental slavery. Some of you don't realize that you're suffering from mental slavery, it seems, right? So... In a sense, you will see an athlete that looks like you, right? Speaks like you, right? And you will see them come out and say, um, this is what I want to be. It comes from where you come from. And you, they come out and they say, this is where I want to be. Um, automatically, there is this, you know, kickback. There's this notion to fight against it, you know, reject it with all your entire being. But if you see somebody from a different cross-section of, of, of society say the same thing, oh, it's, oh my God, great. Yeah, 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 I'm supporting you, right? So that is what I see happening with Sharika Jackson, where Jamaicans just were like, oh my gosh, why is she coming out and say this? I'm like, why? Why the hell not? Why wouldn't Sherika come out and talk about her wanting to break the world record? Do you know how when Elaine Thompson here ran 10.5 in 2021, how it grieved Miss Spirit? It was like she was afraid to say she wanted to grow after that world record because Jamaicans would have her up. Jamaicans would have Nyamar up. And I'm like, if this girl Elaine doesn't open up her mouth to see and tell me that she want to break the world record, me I have a problem. <laughs> that was literally me screaming at every article I was reading or every video I was watching with her, right? Because I, I wanted her to say it so much. But, you know, it, it just felt like she was afraid to say it because she knew how the Jamaican people will react. And it's the same thing now that we're seeing with Sharika, where when she tries to express herself, you know, it's looked upon, you know, in that type of way. Well, when you look at it from an American perspective, Perspective. they know what it feels like for people to only want to hear from them or see them when they want to push a particular agenda so they're like no 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 we are going to take charge so 
Daisy Noah, Daisy Shakiri. Oh, let's use Shakiri. She's the best one to use because separate apart from Noah doing what he was, he's doing now, he had to win a lot of medals to get to this point. He built this up. Let's not mis be mistaken. Let's look at Shakiri though, right? One global medal to speak of um, individually, that is the gold, right? Um, but yeah, but look at where she is. Because guess what? Her people looked at her and her people said, oh, that's me. That could be me, my cousin, my neighbor, my whoever. Let's lift her up as well. So they they, they lifted her up and um, no, they're at this particular stage. And, and literally, we have nobody to blame but ourselves because this is our own doing. We're literally, you know, stifling track and field. I even talked about, it, you know, how I was treated when I just got into, you know, discussing track and field. How there was this immediate kickback because I never told you guys... Um, who I'm, who, who I'm related to, <laughs> you know, what I, what degrees I have, <laughs> you know, I didn't tell you guys, um, where I'm from. I didn't do any of those things. I wanted to build my platform solely on the basis of, you know, what I understood in track and feel and, 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 and go from there. Right. It was never about anything else. Right. And because y'all don't know anything about me, it seems I have some people coming at me so, saying some wild things sometimes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> If, if that's what you think sure right you know what i mean but that's how we're quick to attack people when we think that they're less than right because we automatically assume that oh if you were such and such man's daughter or such and such from wherever or whatever then we would already know, or you would have already said it you know what i mean so it is what it is um at this particular point um i believe that the, it's a jamaican problem I believe it's 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 a we have mental slavery, <laughs> you know what I mean, and yeah, we need to uplift from that. Um, what I would say for our athletes, though, I want our athletes to start now being okay with being themselves, whatever version that is. If that's a version that speaks, you know, English, sure. If that's a version that speaks Patois, sure. So I just want our athletes to be okay with being themselves. Show us that on social media as well. Social media is something for y'all to use to promote yourselves, build your brands. Do that. I see a lot of you shying away from making posts. Some of you have your pages private. I don't know why you want to be an athlete and have your page private. But yeah, those type of things can't fly if you're looking to one, get kind of brand sponsorships because who is going to sponsor you when one, nobody even knows you and they can't get a return on their, 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 the money that they've invested into you. Like, how does that even work? Right. People need to be able to see that they can get a return on their investment. So athletes need to know, know that it's okay to be you. And it's okay to know that that you will make you money. That you is going to garner support. People are going to see that, oh, people are gravitating towards the who, whoever you are. And brand, brands will reach out and be like, okay, sponsorship here, sponsorship there. Look at your same bolt. People gravitated towards him because of who he was. And it wasn't the Jamaican people. Let's be clear. It wasn't the Jamaican people. It was the people on the outside. So don't worry about the Jamaican people. Because they don't have no money to spend money. Is that right? Don't worry about pleasing them. <laughs> it's real don't worry about pleasing them worry about pleasing you know the people on the outside that you know want to look at your brand your product you as a jamaican and 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 grab you up and, and and support you so yeah that's all i will say as it relates to that i agree on some instances with Stephen francis and clearly i dis disagree on a few um well not a few i disagree on one when he talked about how you know the children are taught um that's the only thing i disagree with but yeah Everything else, um, I agree with the children have become boring, but I believe that there's a cause as it relates to why they've become this way. And now they're in this conundrum and now they have to try to figure out how to navigate outside of it. But I've been, you know, advocating for this on my channel for a while. So I'm hoping that athletes see that no one know that, hey, um, there's it's, it's safe. It's OK for them to be themselves. Also, if bloggers reach out to you you know for to bring them out bring you on their platform, why not go right ahead? You know what I mean? When I think about um. Certain channels that they've set up their thing a particular way where they invite guests on. I I have never done this. I've never tried to reach out to an athlete, but it doesn't matter if people try to reach out to you. That's gonna help push you. That's gonna help market to you. Utilize this. So just like how you're thinking that oh the, the person is gonna be using you for views, you're using them also to push you to market you to a wider audience. So um look at it from that perspective. You see Noah doing it. Noah is on every YouTube channel, back and forth, whatever. I see the um. Shakiri girl, not Shakiri girl, so child, Shakiri, 
big, big up. I think she's also another T. <laughs> I don't remember T what, but she's a T something, right? From America that they, they, that, that she she has built up into this no this person that I see all the while on uh, um into the media boxes. So yeah, um, do stuff like that because that's how um you're gonna help build your brand to a, brand to an even higher level. But anyway, Chuck is um. With that said, that's my thoughts on the whole thing. Like the video, of course. Subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.